What's going on guys, my name's Tyler Potts and in today's video we're going to be doing another JavaScript and CSS basic tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to be creating the on-screen pop-up you can see now. So you've got this main pop-up which is our first pop-up, so we've got simple context in there and then a second pop-up which is it's the exact same template but it's got different content in. So you've got multiple different pop-ups um, and this works, you can create as many of these as you want and it, all it does is use the exact same code. You can reuse the JavaScript code, you don't have to keep creating the same code. So without further ado guys, let's get into the video. Okay everyone, so we're going to be starting off with a simple folder with the index.html, main.css and main.javascript files. And the first thing we want to do is set up our markup. So inside of uh, our HTML file, I just used some Emmet there. So let me just show you what I did. I press exclamation mark and tab. And in VS Code, that will automatically populate a boilerplate uh, web project for us so inside title we could do whatever you want here for now i'm just gonna say j js pop-up modal js css pop-up modal we're gonna say link and we're gonna link this uh to our main.css oh not cs css we do not have any c sharp we will not be linking that as a style sheet today thank you very much <laughs> um and that's cool so we've got that and down below we're going to set up our main .js uh, script so we'll hook that up so now they're both linked in and when we write things in here it should now work inside of our browser the next thing we're going to do is i'm going to create just a simple page wrapper and i'm going to add two buttons in there so we're going to say button dot large and then we're going to give them a a pop-up button class which is going to be the class we search for all the bottom buttons with and we're going to give that two so now in here i'm just going to call this main pop up and in the second one i'm just gonna say secondary pop up now we need a couple extra elements inside of this so we've obviously got just a standard button here but we need something that tells us what pop up we need to open so i'm just gonna say data target is equal to and then we pass through a query a um, query selector string in here so we're gonna say hashtag target um and to be fair that's not right we're gonna put hashtag pop up main you can put whatever you want here but it needs to correspond to the id or the class of what pop up you're using so if we're using a hash that's a um, id and if we're using a dot that's a class so in here i'm just going to say pop up of secondary and these are the two ones we're selecting uh, let's zoom out just a little now nah, zoom back in you'll be fine we should put wrap on i'll put wrap on next next time uh but here we're just going to do an actual pop-up now so we're going to say pop-up and we've got to give this one the id of pop-up main so as you can see here the id matches the data target of pop-up main here so when we click the main pop-up this is the pop-up we're going to activate so in here we need a couple of things we need a pop-up overlay which is just on its own we then need a pop-up inner and inside the inner, we can put our content. So in here, I'm just going to say pop-up title main or main title. Pop-up main title. Uh, a H3, which we're just going to say subtitle or main subtitle. And then we're just going to have a paragraph. Let's just say lorem. I'll just give us some lorem ipsum. And then I'm just going to give one more button, which is going to have the button off or the class of button dot pop-up button just like the button above the only difference is we're not having the large class because we don't want this to be a huge button um and then we're going to hit tab and what we're going to say in here is close so there's going to be the close button as you can see i'm gifting them the same name we're going to target these buttons but fire these class and what the buttons actually do is they're just going to toggle the pop-up so they're not actually going to they're not going to erase, or no, they're not going to do individual things. We're not just going to have a close function and a open function. We're going to have a toggle function. So it doesn't matter when you click the button, it'll open or close the uh, pop-up. We then need to give this one a data target, just like the one above. And we're just going to do hashtag pop-up main. So this still needs to link to what we have here. So this means now we can just create loads of pop-ups. Uh, and give them data targets, which will be equivalent to these. And it will apply the same logic to them. 
which is great. So we've got our main pop-up. Now, we're not going to do our secondary pop-up yet. We'll sort that out in a minute. So that's all cool. That's looking good. Let's go over to my terminal, and I'm going to run something called HTTP surfer inside the directory. And that is going to start a web surfer on, on the page. And that means I'm going here and refresh this page. And as you can see, we've got the raw HTML output. And the CSS, obviously, is not working because we have none so let's actually apply some css let's add some pat that's not padding uh padding of zero uh box sizing of border box and let's give it a font family of fire sans and sans serif save go back and there you go so you can see the style sheet is working it's all linked up correctly let's get on with the rest of these and just start styling up so we're gonna go Page, we're going to give it a min, oh, not a kin, a min width height of 100 VH. Now, VH stands for vertical height, so it's going to get all the viewport height. So it's going to get the 100% of the height of our screen or the viewport, which is from right here all the way down to the bottom here. So it's going to, it's going to minimize it to be that height. We're then going to display this as flex. We're going to align item center and we're going to justify item center. So it's going to push everything to the middle. We're then going to style up our buttons, and these are going to have an appearance of none, a border of none, oh, none, a outline of none, and then we're going to display inline block. Once we've done inline block, we're just going to give this a background color of FE4880 to give it a nice pink. Uh, we're going to give it a color of white, um, a font size of 20 pixels. A padding of 1050, oh, sorry, a padding of 10 pixels and 15 pixels, a border radius of 8 pixels, a box shadow to make it look like it's sitting off the page slightly. Again, you can style your buttons however you want. This is just going over some standard styling I would uh, go about doing this. And we'll give it 0 pixels on the left and 15 pixels on the left and right. Sorry, so there we go. And then finally, we're going to add a button dot large, and this is just going to give it a font size of 24 pixels and a padding of 15 pixels and 30 pixels. Hit save. Let's have a look what that's done. Bam. There you go. So now you can see that our pop up stuff is still down here and we kind of don't want it to be on screen regardless. Um, but we have our pop ups nice and styled on our screen. Um, so let's style the pop up next. So for the pop up. We're going to need to say pop up and we're going to give this a position of fixed. Now we're going to give it a top of zero, a left of zero. I accidentally just took a screenshot because my Mac is very annoying. Um, right of zero and bottom of zero. We're going to give it a C index of 999 because we want it to be at the very top of everything. So when we open this pop up, it will pop up. <laughs> We're going to say display flex, justify content center, and then align items center. So now this is going to send our, our inner element to the center. So our content will be in the middle. Uh, we need an opacity of zero because we don't want this to be visible. We also don't want to be able to click on it when it is invisible. So we're going to sell it to point of offense none. And then we're going to give it a transition of 0 0.4 seconds. That's how long it's going to take to go from opacity 0 to opacity 1. So we're going to say popup.isActive. So this is the class we're going to toggle on our popup to get it to appear. And all we're going to say is opacity 1, pointer events, all. And now, we're, also we're going to pass here opacity because it's the only thing we're transitioning from. And now that will allow us to toggle our Thing. So if we go back and we refresh, shift refresh, because it'll get rid of my, it'll clear my cache on my CSS. As you can see, if I scroll down, there is an link there, because the pop-up is now overlaying on our screen, but it's invisible. So you can see here, if we turn off the opacity, you can see it now appears on screen. Let's turn that back off, let's close that, and let's go, let's get the rest of the sign done. So we now need to say pop-up hyphen overlay so there's our overlay we need to give it a position of absolute we need to give it a top of zero a left of zero a right of zero 
a bottom of zero, and a C index of zero. A lot of zeros, I know. We need to give it a background color of RGBA and that. Again, style is, I say you have to, you don't have to. You can give it whatever styling you want. The main elements are here um, if you want to add that. And obviously, this allows it to come up. So that will be our pop up overlay. Save. And then we need to need our pop up inner to have a position of relative. Oh, wrong line. Position of relative, a C index of 1, just higher than our O flags. We want it to sit on top. We then want to give it a max width of whatever value you want. I'm going to choose 600. I'm going to give it a padding of 50 pixels and 30 pixels. A background color of white. A border radius of 16 pixels. And finally, a box shadow of 0 pixels, 3 pixels, 6 pixels, RGBA, and that there just to make it feel like it's sat off the screen again and then we're just going to say pop up h2 and i'm going to say color it's going to be 313131 font size is going to be 28 pixels font style font size please and our font weight is going to be 600 there you go now we're going to get our pop up h3 we're going to give this a color of 8888 we're going to give this a font size of 20 pixels. And finally, a font weight of 600, just like the above. But we're going to give this one a margin bottom of 30 pixels to push the button down or the paragraphs down. And finally, we're going to get the pop-up paragraphs. And we're just going to say color is equal to 666. Uh, font size is equal to 16 pixels, which it should be by default anyway, but we'll just make sure it is. Font weight of, oh, sorry, that should be 400, not 600. And a margin bottom of 15 pixels. We then want the last one of these to have last of type. And we want it to have a margin bottom of 30 pixels. So we want it to push it right down the button. And that should have styled our popper. But we can't see it because we need the class of is active. So if we add that class of is active, really, you can see this is what it looks like. Which is perfect, but now we need to toggle this. Also, that background, that uh, overlay is not dark enough. So let's go to the overlay, and I'm just going to say 0.5. Refresh. There you go. Now it looks like something's popped up on, on our screen. So now we need to be able to close and open it. So let's go in here, and let's remove the is active state. Let's go into our main JS, and now it's time to do the fun stuff. So we're going to say window.onload, and we're going to say, we're just going to use an arrow function. And we're going to basically get a constant of all our pop-up buttons. We're going to set it equal to document dot query selector all. And we're going to do dot pop-up hyphen button. So if we go back to our HTML, you can see all our buttons have pop-up button. And that's what we're targeting here. We're getting all of them. Now we're going to use a for each loop here. So we're going to say pop-up buttons dot for each. And then we're going to use an arrow function and say button and then we're going to pass it through so we're going to loop through every single button using a for each loop i know normally i use a for loop but today i want to do something a bit different and use a for each um so in here we're just going to say uh button dot add event listener click and then we're going to pass through the event in an arrow function and what we're going to do is we're going to get the target we set e dot target, so we're going to get the event. We're going to get the target, which would be the button. We're going to get its data set of target. Now, oh, sorry, that should be equals to. And let me show you what we're doing. This. So you see our data target here of pop up main. That is what we're trying to grab here. So we're getting the event, which is going to be linked back to our button click event. We're going to get the target of the event, which is our button. Is the button we clicked. We're going to get its data set, which stands for anything with data hyphen. That is the part of a data set. And anything afterwards is going to be the parameter we call. So we're going to say dot target. And that's going to store the value, which is inside these quotes, inside this target, which is great. We then go const popup element is equal to document dot query selector target. So what we're doing here is we're saying whatever this target is equal to, for example, hashtag main, we're going to try and find that inside the DOM, which is going to be right here. So now if we go pop up L 
um, or we can just say if popup element is not equal to null. So if it exists, we're going to say popup element dot class list dot toggle, and we're going to say is active. So what this is going to do now, so every time we click any button, we're just going to toggle the class is active along as the data target matches. So let's go back to our code. Let's refresh. If we click main pop-up, you can see it pops up. Now we can click close. Awesome. Main pop-up, close. We need to set up our secondary one. So now to set up a second one, it's as easy as copying this, pasting it, changing the ID to match whatever we want it to be called. So pop-up secondary. And in here saying pop-up secondary title and then secondary subtitle. Now if we refresh, we get our main. And if we get our secondary, so you can see that works together very well. Oh, so another thing we've done wrong here is we didn't change our close button to target the secondary. So if we update that and we go main, you can see that works. Secondary, now that works. So now you can close both. But one thing you can't do, so if we open up main, for example, that's cool. Normal functionality is that you can click on this outside of the actual pop-up on the darker area to close the pop-up, but you can't here. Now, this is as easy as getting the pop-up button class, adding it to our overlay, and then giving it the data target and putting it in here. So let's do the same for up here. Let's copy, or let's just paste the data target on here. This one will be main. And let's get the pop-up button class and add it to our overlay. Now, if we refresh and we click, you can see it doesn't work if we click on the white, but if we click on the dark, you can see it closes the current pop-up. And as you can see, it works for both main and secondary. Now, that was a very basic tutorial, guys, and I hope you enjoyed it. What we've done today is we learned how to use JavaScript and CSS, and a bit of HTML, of course, to create some pop-ups, some modern pop-ups, really simple, really what how many lines of javascript was that that was 14 lines of javascript which you could remove the spaces and make it 12 lines of javascript and you could get even less if you really wanted to um but for clean purposes we're going to keep it like this um and yeah so that is that guys i hope you enjoyed this tutorial if you did don't forget to leave a thumbs up smash that subscribe button and hit that notification bell guys leave a comment below if you have any questions or just leave a comment saying hi thank you guys for watching this tutorial if you enjoy my videos uh, you're awesome. Thank you very much and peace out.